Hi friends, welcome to Concepts of Geology, the online platform where we are learning geology rather now crystallography through a series of comprehensive classes. Remember on the last class that was the beginning of crystallography, we have divided the entire syllabus of crystallography into five modules. And today I am going to start the module one, the first module that was the distribution of atoms inside a crystal. Okay. Now look, these are the topics those will be covered within this module one. I have subdivided the subject of module one again into 10 classes. The first class will be about the pioneer observations, the observations made by our pioneer crystallographers. On the next class, this is the time to learn the concepts of unit cell and lattices. Then we need to learn about the perfect and prominent choice of unit cell within a given lattice. The fourth class will be about the two dimensional arrangement of atoms that is the concept of plane lattices and two dimensional shapes of unit cells. Then we will gradually move to the world of three dimensions, okay? the basic shapes of unit cell in three dimension. The chapter 6 or class 6 will be very important and uh, interesting also because this is the time to learn about the seven crystal systems within the crystallography. Okay? After the learning of crystal systems, we will move to the non-primitive unit cells. And then this is the ultimate goal of crystallography, ultimate goal of the module 1 that is the learning about the space lattice or the Bravis lattices that means the three dimensional arrangement of atoms, three dimensional lattices. Okay? Class 9 will again brush up our conception about the crystal systems again because this is the class where we are going to learn about the trigonal crystal system. We know we have seven crystal systems in crystallography and trigonal system is the most doubtful uh, concept within these crystal systems. Okay? We always feel a doubt about why trigonal crystal system is different from the hexagonal system. That doubt will be cleared within this class 9. Okay? The last class, that is the 10th class of module 1, we will learn about the relationship between the shape and symmetry of unit cell and mineral crystals. So now we are moving to the first class that is the pioneer observations. Do you know the man in this picture? He was a Danish scientist in 17th century who became a bishop on his later life. In 1669 he studied a lot of quartz crystals and observed that the interfacial angles between two adjacent prism faces of the crystals are always 120 degree no matter how the crystals have formed. Remember at that time there was no conception of periodic arrangement of atoms or something like that inside a regular solid material. This concept is called the first law of crystallography or the law of constancy of interfacial angles. I guess you have recognized the person now. Yes, he was Nichols Steno, same person who postulated the fundamental laws of stratigraphy also. So, the first law of crystallography is the angle between the equivalent faces of crystals of the same mineral are always the same despite of the size and shape of the crystal. Okay? Now, standing on today, this observation is not very hard to think about, but still we become confused that how can the interfacial angles remain same if the shape of the crystal changes. To understand this, look at the two objects. See, these are two different shapes. This is square and this is a rectangle. Okay? The equivalent faces of this square and rectangle are this one and this one. Okay? Now see, Despite of these different shapes, the angle between these two equivalent faces are always right angle. Okay? But this and these shapes are not similar, not same, but only the equivalent angles are here similar. Okay? So this is the conception that how can the interfacial angles remain same if the shape of the crystal changes. Okay? However, Steno studied the external morphology of the crystal at a pioneer stage, but in 1784, Rene Harvey studied calcite crystals and found that they had the same shape no matter whatever the size is. He said that there must have an existence of basic building blocks inside a crystal and postulated that 
large crystals formed when many of these building blocks bonded together. He called these building blocks as integral molecules. This idea was supported by Berzelius et al who established that the composition of a mineral does not depend on the sample size. That means again there must have a basic building block with a definite chemistry which when repeated makes a larger crystal in size. Okay? Additionally, Joseph Proust and John Dalton proved that the elements combined in proportion of small rational numbers. So from these pioneer observations, the basic principles of crystallography were established. The first principle was the crystals are made up of small building blocks. Those are having definite chemistry defined by small number of atoms. So in simple word that means two different building blocks should not have the same chemistry or two building blocks with different chemistry should not have same shape or same uh, symmetry. Okay. The second principle is all these building blocks are of same composition. The next one is the basic building blocks repeats and this helps to grow the crystal in size. And the last one is the crystal should have a shape and symmetry that is similar to the shape and symmetry of the building block because ultimately these are the blocks which are going to repeat in three dimension and make the crystal larger. But the problems arrived when scientists discovered crystals with different composition can have same morphology. Or again, crystals with different morphologies also can have same chemistry. In 1809, Ulaston showed that calcite, magnesite and siderite, they are forming rhombohedral crystals. Okay? Now see, this is the calcite. CaCO3, calcium carbonate, this is magnesite, MgCO3 and siderite, FeCO3 all are having different chemistries but their crystal shapes are rhombohedral. Okay? This shape is called rhombohedral. This is a stretched cube, okay? diagonally stretched cube. Okay? This feature is called isostructuralism. Again observe calcium carbonate that is the CaCO3 was found to crystallize in two different morphologies one having building block shape like a rhombohedron okay we have already discussed and the other is having a orthorhombic shape the first variety is called the calcite this is the rhombohedral division and the second one is known as aragonite although both are having the same chemistry cso3 calcium carbonate but their crystal shapes are differing this feature is called polymorphism so that means the pioneer principles were not flawless although they are providing the base for today's advanced crystallography. So accordingly they were modified and we got the today's first principles concept of crystallography. Okay? So now we can see the modified versions of these points. Okay? These are the basic principles of crystallography. The first point is the crystals are formed by basic building blocks. Okay? These are called unit cells now. The second one is the relative proportions of the elements in a unit cell are given by the chemical formula of the mineral. So that means the calcium carbonate CaCO3 means the unit cell of the calcite is having a chemical formula CaCO3. Okay? The unit cells are arranged in a pattern guided by a lattice. Crystals belong to one of the seven crystal systems. Unit cells of distinct shape and symmetry characterize each crystal system. The total crystal symmetry depends on both the unit cell symmetry and lattice symmetry also. We will discuss this point rather we will feel we will understand these points with going more and more deep in crystallography. Okay? So this is all about the first class the pioneer observations on the next class we will learn the concept of lattice and unit cells. Goodbye for today.